What up? My name is Solom, I play Hearthstone and I want to help you today to decide on a deck to craft. I want to show you some ways on how you can find different decks that you would like to craft or would like to play. Because the game can be pretty expensive depending on the deck you play, getting as much information about the deck as possible before you craft anything is usually a good strategy. So whether you play standard or wild or just play against your friends, you still have to play a deck. So what type of deck do you want to play? Do you want to play an aggressive deck, a combo deck, a control deck? Which class do you want to play? Do you want to do something specific in that? Do you like a certain archetype? There are a bunch of questions. But most of you, you want to play a deck that wins. You want to know about the best deck, the best class, all of that. And for that you can do multiple things. You could go for example to HS Replay to take a look at the win rates for certain decks. That works for standard a lot better than for wild because there are less decks that are played and there's more data on those decks. You could just look up a deck on YouTube as there will very likely be at least a guide or some gameplay of that deck and you can see exactly how the deck performs. Or you can look at Twitch for example. There are some top legend players streaming that have like 5 viewers. If you would join them and just ask questions, they would be glad to answer you. When it comes to a deck or a class, pick the one that feels comfortable. For me, I picked Warlock as my main class because I like the hero power the most. What I don't like in Hearthstone is when I don't draw cards. For example, I used to play Paladin a lot, but what I soon realized is, in order to draw cards in Paladin, I have to play a card that draws me a card. And if I don't have anything, I summon a 1-1, one -one, which is fairly useless. Or maybe you want to play Control Heavy, so Warrior is your pick. Maybe you want to steal things and then you like Priest. Maybe you just play the game for fun and you like Random. Then you can play Mage. A lot of cards in Mage have Random in there. Sadly though, there is no way of actually playtesting things. Which means you really just have to think if the things you see on screen are something you would like to do yourself. If you're not sure, for example, if you should craft a Rogue or Warrior deck, unless you have a friend who has all those cards and plays against you so you can borrow their deck, there's no way for you playing that deck. You could craft Whispering even though it's now a wild card, and then you can just play Whispering until you randomly get the deck you would like to test. Which after all is still a 1 in 20, but you technically have 20 decks you can play test. But it's also 1600 dust, so I feel like Blizzard should do a better job of letting you play test things. But to help you a little more to decide on what you would like to play, we are going to create 4 different decks together, an aggro deck, a midrange deck, a control deck, and a combo deck. And I will tell you exactly why I put which card in my deck, and then I will show you one game each, so you can see how the deck would perform, and how a deck in that style is going to play out. For a combo deck we are going to play Haiki Bara, which means you want to play Mogul Cultist 7 times, and then you summon a giant 20-20 minion, which also deals 20 damage. So to make that combo happen, we need multiple cards. We need Galinda Kuroskin, we need Emperor Taurusin, as well as Drakari, so we can have minus two mana on every card in our hand. We need to have a way to kill Glinda. We need, obviously, Mogo Cultist. And in order to not just deal 20, but 40 damage, we want to play the quest to gain a hero power that draws a minion and makes it cost zero mana. We want to play Baleful Banker to shuffle Haiki Bara, and then we want to play Tour Guide to use our hero power and draw that Haiki Bara again. That is the idea of the deck. That in itself is like 10 cards already. Now because the idea is to get to the combo as fast as possible, we want to include as much draw as possible. We're going to put in Gobo Librarian, Novus Engineer, Loot Hoarder, Mortal Coil, all the cards you have that draw things. And at the same time while you draw things, you also don't want to die if your opponent plays too aggressive. So you need to have some bot clears. The go-to bot clears are usually Plague of Flames, then we also play Defile, which is just a great board clear, and we play Dark Skies. As we draw a bunch of cards, our hand is usually going to be quite full. We also include Reno in here. Reno is only active when your deck has no duplicates, but because you're going to end up drawing the entire deck anyways, Reno will be active no matter what. And now to the actual game and how it played out. In the first few turns, we really just used our quest and drew as many cards as possible. The moment our opponent had some minions on the field, and we thought that they might deal too much damage, we just used the file. You draw, you remove things. You draw, you destroy minions. Until eventually your opponent doesn't have that many things on the field, you can use Reno to heal, follow up the next turn by using Drakari and Emperor. So you can reduce the cost of the minions in your hand by 2 mana each. Which makes it so that a combo is possible. That is the one important turn because the opponent might have too many minions on the field and then just gains lethal. Then a turn later we're going to do our combo. Which means we're going to play Glinda Crowskin, summon 6 Mogul Cultist, then we destroy Glinda and summon a 7th one. The echo effect, by the way, is capped on the minion for whatever reason. You see the animation, you summon Haiki Bara, then the important thing happens, you shuffle him into your deck, and you use 2 guides so your hero power costs 0 mana. Because of your hero power, Haiki Bara costs 0 mana. Which then means you not just have 1, but 2. So instead of dealing 20 damage, you deal 40 damage which is then lethal. Not every single combo deck is going to be exactly like that. If you play a druid for example and then use a Vienna Kuhn for any combo, you just get a bunch of armor. But the play still is very similar across all combo decks. You try to not die and then pull off something. Let's put what you will encounter the most on ladder in any game mode and that is an aggressive deck. 
I thought about creating a Pirate Warrior deck, as it was the deck that I used to get to Legend for the first time. If you play an aggressive deck, you have to know and understand that the way you win is by overwhelming your opponent by having more things on the field, and by trying to disrupt the enemy. Now to create an aggressive deck, it's really easy and fairly cheap as most aggressive decks have like 2 or 3 legendaries maximum. For pirates, what you can really do is just type in pirates and add almost all the pirates you have. Which, as you can tell, we did. We didn't really play many spells, we played like Cutting Class, because I thought it might be an interesting spell to test, as it would draw your cards for like 1 or 2 mana, sometimes even 3. We put Wrench Calibur as well as Ankar in here, as well as Corsair Catch, so we can draw a weapon, and we use Leroy as a finisher. Aggressive decks are really just that, aggressive. Have cards, play cards, aim face. There's not a big strategy. The hard part is if you play against another aggressive deck and you don't know when to trade and when to go face. And because we have good RNG, we're going to face an aggressive deck, which is Kingspin Rogue. We always keep Nazoth first mate. Why? Because it gives you a weapon and it summons the Brigand for free and patches. It's a 1 mana, gain a 1 3 weapon, and summon 4 4 stats. The enemy Rogue decides to use Sap on our Sky Barge, which is just ship's cannon but has more stats, and we just play it again. Reason is, if your opponent removes it once, they usually can't remove it twice. So whenever you play a pirate now, you're going to deal 2 damage. I mean right now it's turn 4 and we dealt 18 damage already. We could have traded the 2-1 on the enemy's field, but there was no need, as we will have lethal in like 2 turns from now anyways. The opponent plays a couple of minions, doesn't matter, we buff our stuff, go face. And right now, no matter what the opponent does, they're down to 4 health. They are just dead on the bot. There's nothing they can do to prevent that. If you play against another aggressive deck and you have the initiative by going first, you can really just play more aggressive and go face and end up winning. To build a mid-range deck, like Libra and Paladin in our example, you have to think about some things. How do you have an early game that makes it so that you don't lose and get established on the field, and have like a turn 7 onwards game which makes it so that you don't run out of things. And in our case, when playing Librams, you first off add every single Librams card, which is like 12 or 13 already, and then you think about what your deck should do. There are some cards that usually make sense in this deck, for example Liadrin, Linessa, as well as a quest. Yavadon is more for fun, by the way, but also a bunch of buff spells. If Linessa is going to cast all the buffs on herself, and Liadrin gives all the buffs back, we can just include a couple of them. And just having things like Hand of Aldar to draw some cards and buff your things can be effective as well. If you decide to play a pure paladin, you might as well add Lightforge D a lot, as it gives you a true silver champion for free. And then you just add some other cards that make sense. Christology always draws you two cards of a mana, that's very effective. You can add another Lightforged. You can add Master for Battle as it is 3-3 three, three in stats and you get a weapon. And if you play Terum as well, you can make those 1-1s one into 3-3s. Three, Midrange decks are the most effective against control decks, as it is hard for them to follow up with all the mid-game pressure you put on. We are facing an even Shaman, which is fairly aggressive and resolves around using their hero power to summon a bunch of totems and then they buff those totems. Because they have totems, they can also place things like Siege and things from below for a lot less mana than they used to. And all we get to do to follow up with that is just summon minions and hope we don't die on the field. That is pretty much all you can do. If your opponent plays more aggressive, you have to hope that they make bad trades or make decisions that favor you. So in the early game, we are really just losing on the field. Eventually, after opponent plays a couple totems and a 5-5, we go white on the field, which makes it so that we can follow up using Sunkeeper Terum, trade their giant, and have a 3-7 on the field, which is going to take care of the 2 minions that are left on the board. At some point, because you play mid-range deck that generates lots of value, you're going to have an entire handful of stuff, while your opponent is slowly running out of things. And even if they play aggressive, you always have Labyrinth of Hope to restore like 8 health twice. You have a bunch of things in your hand, you have enough to not die, and most importantly, you will very likely come back on the field with relative ease. This, for example, right here is the swing turn. From our opponent winning, we now go to us winning. And there's not much they can do right now. And to their bad luck, they also get a random legendary, which is anomalous, which deals, you know, AoE to everything. So now, even though we are behind on the bot again due to all the legendaries, we just trade that and we are ahead on the bot. That obviously is just RNG and it not always happens like that. But you could also play something like Labyrinth of Justice and then remove those giant minions one after another. You play Lunessa, look at some animations, draw some cards. At this point, it's really just GG. You outvalued your opponent, you didn't die when they had the chance to kill you, and you win the game. So I thought about we build a control warrior, because you face a lot of aggressive ducks, just playing out warrior and having a hero power that is upgraded, gives you 4 armor every time you press it, is usually enough to win against most things. You really just have to put in Baku, then put in a bunch of odd cards, and keep in mind that 
What you want to win against are aggressive ducks. So you want to put in things that remove stuff in the early game and minions or spells that you can cast on turn 5 onwards. For example, Brawl is a great example. Or Dynomatic. You play it, you deal 5 damage and you establish a minion. So to build a control deck, you really just have to think about want to win against slow decks or aggressive decks. In most cases against aggressive decks. So just put an armor gain and things that deal damage and you're usually fine. We also play Brand and Codelight because if your opponent is like out of cards, you can use Brand Double Codelight and have lethal due to fatigue. And if you play against something like a control deck, you can just make them burn a bunch of cards. The giant downside of control decks is that they lose to combo decks, as you just give them infinite time to get their combo pieces. So if you face something like Megathune as well, you need to have Brand and Codelight so the opponent dies to fatigue. This match was a day before Dark Lair Warlock got nerfed, by the way. So if you see Dark Lair, I know it's nerfed now, but even against Dark Lair Warlock, which is incredibly broken, you will see how this deck performs. Obviously, having a one drop at the very beginning is pretty important as it not just removes stuff but also gives you armor. It makes it so that on turn 2 you already have 6 armor. So if you were to use Reckless Flurry, you could deal up to 6 damage AoE. One and a half flame strikes already. You have to also know what your enemy is going to do. In this case against Dark Lair Warlock, they are going to use Dark Lair to gain a bunch of mana back and summon either a lot of small minions or a bunch of giants. My game plan here was to let my opponent establish as many minions as possible on the field so I get as much value as possible for my bot clears. In this case I thought I could use Reckless Flurry and get rid of Dark Lair or I just equip my Bulwark of Azinoth so I don't take damage for the next 4 attacks and then probably use either Brawl or Armor Flurry the turn after. And in this case they didn't do anything on the field so I thought if I just play minion and hero power I still have enough armor for Armor Flurry that even if they play giants I can remove them. And as it turns out there's some giants and we could remove them. The turn after your bot clear, they're usually going to flood the entire board again because you play around one bot clear, but not two in most cases. So what you do again at that point is you use Brawl, your second bot clear, and then destroy everything your opponent has built. At this point, they're out of steam. You have more cards in the hand than they do, and it's going to take them some time to re-establish their minions. Now you can also use your lower cost removals and just easily clear the bot, and then they're soon going to be in fatigue. You can become Dr. Boom, but in many cases, even though we play Dr. Boom, I prefer to stay with my normal hero power, as I know for sure it's going to give me armor. Because we have 10 mana, the opponent uses Lothab, we can still cast Brawl, which makes it so even if they play a bunch of minions, there's only going to be one remaining. We have a total of 43 health, the opponent has no minions, 3 cards left, they're in fatigue, and as you can tell, playing a controller correctly can be quite fun. But this is more like your opponent tries to play the game, and you try to stop them from playing the game. But it works! Now obviously, there are different decks, you can play for example Questmate, which plays differently, you could play an old Patron Warrior deck, which doesn't work. There are a bunch of exceptions, but those four archetypes, those four starts of decks, are the ones you're going to encounter very likely. 9 out of 10 games are going to be against one of those archetypes. So I hope that made your decision a little bit easier when it comes to crafting a deck. Deck codes should be down below in the description. And I would say, my name is Solomon, we stream on Twitch.tv and you can leave a like because it's free. Besides that, I would just say, have a good day and take care.